If I describe Mr. Taylor as a teacher, I would describe him as being efficient. Everything we do in, in class uh, works up to a goal of understanding whatever it is we happen to be covering. Every assignment is pushing us towards cementing our understanding of a topic. And yet with that, not only is he just teaching the curriculum, but he has passion behind that, so it makes his lessons all the richer. And I think with that passion is taking uh, the time to teach it until the students understand. He's not just running through to get it done. He's running through to teach us. Well, you know, Taylor's just a cool teacher. He knows what he's doing. He's been doing it a while, I think. And he, the way he speaks, he talks to us like we're humans and adults, and he doesn't talk down to us at all. He's, he's a cool dude. Do you guys remember the americium from the fire detector? Yes. So what, what do you know about this? It, it's radioactive. It's radioactive, right? So this is releasing alpha particles. This is the only man-made element that is re used in everyday devices. Special note. Um, yes, special note. Now, luckily, glass blocks alpha particles, so you're not being hit with that radioactivity right now. I think the key to being an effective teacher is recognizing that in today's digital world, uh, tension spans are short. Um, a lot of them go into classes expecting to be entertained. It's in mineral oil because it will react violently with water. And we're going to do a lab later this uh, semester where you guys will play with some calcium and we'll generate some hydrogen gas and blow some things up. You've got to try to find that balance between connecting with them personally and realizing how they learn and how, what their life is like outside of the classroom, but then also being able to focus them and saying, okay, now this, this task that you're on is going to require you to not be talking about other things. And, and finding that fine balance between that is, is tricky, but when you do it right, then they really em enjoy the class and they really start taking ownership of it and they become successful. Do you guys remember what state of matter iodine was? It was a solid at room temperature. You can see it's a silvery solid, right? Watch what happens as the, as the iodine heats up. Iodine will sublimate directly from a solid to a gas. Is that why it looks kind of pink? There goes the gas coming up. Now iodine is much, much heavier than air. If you look at it on the periodic table, iodine's way down there compared to nitrogen and oxygen. So it has a tendency to just kind of sink and settle to the bottom. But as you, you can kind of slosh it around as a fluid, you see how it's sloshing it around? Now, I built up a little pressure in there, and what you'll start to see is some liquid iodine. We're going to reach the triple point where it can exist in all three states of matter at once. Solid, liquid, and gas. The reason that I teach is that when I was going into trying to decide what career I wanted, whether it be wildlife biology or education, I wanted a career where I felt like I was going to help society, that I felt like that I was going to make the world a better place. And I realized that talking to people, interacting with people was, was the skill that I had, and that that was how I was going to improve society. And so I really enjoy the opportunity of helping to build young citizens who are going to be productive members of society and who also hopefully will leave the world better than they found it.